Hello, Commanders! Welcome back to the Command Table. This is Mathermar, and we are moving ahead with our journey walkthrough. We are now on battles 166 through 170, which are on map 2 of the Uncharted Jungle. So, before we get into that, if you would please be so kind as to like, subscribe, and if you want notifications when I drop new videos, hit that notification bell. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave those below. So let's go ahead and jump into 166. So this one, we have three giant toads, and then we've got two soul pylons, two frost wizards, and two groups of shield bearers. So my thought for this one was to put something that the toads couldn't swallow up front, also that something that they could take damage from. The Valkyrie is there to support them and to keep at least one of them alive, but I don't think I'll have too much trouble here. The Crystal Spires are there to nuke down everything that comes in range, which should be both groups of shield bearers and all three toads. The Assassins are ranged again in our vertical orientation by taking them off the map and putting them on the map until you get a nice wide spread in a vertical formation. And they're going to split in the back, one to go to each Frost Wizard. So it only takes one group to neutralize four army points on the other side. Then we've got the two groups of archers for ranged DPS, along with our Ember Fiend to burn down the Toads and the Shield Bearers. So the uh, Shield Bearers are going to walk forward, which means that after the Assassins are done with the Frost Wizards, they'll move forward to the Soul Pylons. Um, I'm not too terribly concerned about uh, the soul pylon orbs. The worst possible thing that could happen is hitting the Valkyrie. And even then, if that does happen, the um, Thorn Guards have some pretty decent longevity. So watch and see how things go. Okay, there's a good split. Both Assassins down, both soul pylons down. One soul pylon orb, and look. Boom. It's the Valkyrie. But it doesn't matter. The Thorn Guards have sufficient protection on them to give them the longevity that they need to finish the battle. All right, 167. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay, we've got two, three Arcane Archers. Three Arcane Archers, two groups of Risen Warriors, the Death Knight, two Faceless Knights, and three sets of Warhounds. So I've kept my Thorn Guards up front. I did move everything down a bit. I got the Crystal Spires down here. And the between the Thorn Guards and the Crystal Spires, the Warhounds are not going to last very long. And the Thorn Guards are immune to stun, which means the Faceless Knights will not be able to stun them. The Valkyrie is closest to the Thorn Guards, even though you see the Risen Warriors there. They are technically not closer because they'll be popping over to the other side of the map and they cannot be targeted by the Valkyrie when they are in their graves. So uh, she'll still be healing the Thorn Guards. Our two sets of Assassins are set up in such a way that the top group of Assassins will split between these two Arcane Archers. The Risen Warriors will take care of the other Arcane Archer, and this set of Assassins is dedicated to the Death Knight because that's the primary threat out of all of this. The Plague Bearers in the back are put there to counter the Risen Warriors, and they should be somewhere in this vicinity when the Risen Warriors pop, and that should enable them to hold the line while the Crystal Spires nuke them down. So that's the theory behind that one. Watch as it plays out. There goes the Death Knight and two of the Arcane Archers. Here comes the Risen Warriors to get the other Arcane Archers, my Plague Bearers in position to hold the line for the Crystal Spires to burn down the enemy Risen Warriors. Nice and smooth. Okay, so that was 167. Let's move on to 168. All right, let's see what we've got. We have three Earth Elementals. We have three Brutes. And we've got three groups of archers. So, um, took a different uh, thought process to this one. I thought, uh, since it's almost all melee, what I can do is I can just throw in a battle drummer with a bunch of stuff, and it'll take half the damage, and it will win. So all I have to do at that point is counter the ranged. So I put the two assassins again, oriented them with the on-off trick until they had the formation that I wanted. 
in this case diagonal in the mirror formation that when they pop over to the other side one will split to each group. So then I'll ultimately end up with two assassins, one from each group coming here and one from each group going to the top and bottom. So once they're done there they'll move forward and contribute some DPS but they'll probably get pounded uh, by all of the uh, air, area of effect cone damage from all these units. But uh, shouldn't matter because I've got my group to counteract them and the drummer being again the key element there. So here goes, there goes both sets of archers and now it's just down to the melee and the drummer is going to win the day there. Everything else is going to get some nice damage in, burn everything down. Uh, you could do something a little further back, like uh, maybe archers would have been a better choice than the hammer throwers, because then they wouldn't be getting hit. And uh, you could even drop the hammer throwers entirely, and even uh, maybe one group of hammer throwers in the brute and throw your paladin in there, and that would increase your longevity as well. So that's another alternative for you. All right, so moving on, let's go to 169. Okay, we have a battle wagon in the shape of a pirate ship. We've got two death knights and four groups of hammer throwers. So my thought process here was that we could easily resolve the battle wagon with a group of mine shrooms. That's an easy trade, one army point for three. So we'll go ahead and send that back, and that'll give us three army points, because once that pops, everything in the battle wagon is ours. Then we just need to resolve the death knights and the hammer throwers, so I've got my trusty assassins to take out the death knights, and then I've got some quick burning melee damage to burn through the hammer throwers. The wraiths do great because the hammer throwers don't see them until they strike, and by then half of them are gone. And then when the hammer throwers start throwing at the wraith, the dogs are either right behind or right in the midst of it, shredding through everything else. So pretty straightforward. Uh, just threw in the archers because I had an extra army point. They aren't terribly crucial. But uh, we'll go ahead and run it through so you can see it play out. Okay, there goes the battle wagon. There goes the death knights. And everything else is just getting shredded to pieces. So nice and smooth. We like it. And on to 170. All right. What have we got here? We have two giant toads right up front. We've got a bunch of the arcane blades. We have some plague throwers and a funky looking toad plague thrower skin. I think we saw that once before. So we've got plague to be concerned about. And then we've got the uh, devour ability of the giant toads that can swallow things. Um, I've put in a draining spirit and I realize not everybody's going to be rank 12 when they try to take this on. So there are alternatives for that. You don't have to use a draining spirit. Um, and I'll uh, give you some options there. But uh, the assassins I'm using to take out the plague throwers and the arcane blades they're going to run forward and start ping-ponging back and forth over this brute inside the radius of that draining spirit, and that's going to kill them. The uh, Ember Fiend is going to give them a burn, which is going to help them to die even faster. And then these Risen Warriors are to take out that uh, Plague Thrower if the Assassins don't manage to make their way back there, if they end up following something else. So the Brute is going to stay alive with the help of the Valkyrie, Pretty straightforward, um, and uh, we'll mention some alternatives here, but we'll go ahead and let it run. Okay, so you'll notice the arcane blades, they get hit by the brute, and some of them even get knocked towards um, my back line, but just barely. That could be a threat that you run into, so you may choose to use thorn guards instead. But um, you can put thorn guards in there with a drummer, you can put mine shrooms. Um, I, I, I like to put them behind. Let's, uh, let's pull that one up again. So that, uh, yeah, that was 170. So um, I like to, uh, okay, say this was the thorn guards instead of the brute. I put, uh, whenever you see a bunch of arcane blades, you can put the, um, the mine shrooms ahead of the thorn guards and the thorn guards will walk into them. 
but um, I like to put them behind because they just blink right through the unit and end up landing in those mine shrooms. And then they start fighting each other and ping-ponging all over the place. So those are a couple of different options that you can use to counter the arcane blades. Uh, you can use a freeze trap, but uh, if the front group triggers it, then the back group probably won't get hit, and maybe even half of each of these middle groups. So I prefer the mine shrooms over a uh, freezing trap. So anyway, uh, that covers battles 165 through 170. I hope that helps you out. So please do like and subscribe. Also, if you would please check out the commandtable.com where we have tutorials, raid strats, and coming soon we will have merchandise and comics. Thank you for watching. We'll have more content for you soon.